Mount Athos, also known as the Holy Mountain, is situated on the easternmost peninsula of Chalkidiki, northern Greece. Many Greek cities had flourished in antiquity on this peninsula. In the 4th century BC, they were incorporated into the Kingdom of Macedonia. Eight centuries later, in other words, in the 4th century AD, Mount Athos became part of the Byzantine Empire. It is likely that the first monks settled there at that time. They came from Egypt and Palestine, where monastic centers were already flourishing. It was therefore natural that the organizational structure of Athenite monasticism followed their traditional models. In other words, monks were organized in lavras and individual retreats. Later on, in small monasteries, in skitis, and in individual hermitages known as kelya. The earliest form of monastic administration on Mount Athos was the Cathedraton Gerondon, a council of elders presided over by the Protos. In 963, Saint Athanasios founded the Megisti Lavra, the Great Lavra, on the northeast tip of Mount Athos Peninsula. It was the first Kinobitic monastery on a grand scale. Successive Byzantine emperors instituted and safeguarded numerous beneficial arrangements for monks and special privileges for Mount Athos. Athenite monks succeeded in maintaining these special privileges and in safeguarding certain beneficial arrangements after the fall of Thessalonica to the Ottomans in 1435 and after the fall of Constantinople, capital of the Byzantine Empire, in 1453. There has been a lot of restructuring of monastic establishments since the foundation of the Megisti Lavra. It is estimated that in the 12th century there were more than a hundred monasteries of various size. Out of all these monastic establishments, 20 monasteries were recognized as sovereign and their entity was safeguarded. Their number is still maintained today. Earlier monasteries were either turned into hermitages or were abandoned and abolished. Mount Athos was formerly placed under the spiritual suzerainty of the Ecumenical Patriarchate at Constantinople in the 14th century by an imperial chrysobul. The Isikast movement was the hallmark of the 14th century. Isikasm became the center of orthodox monastic spiritual life. Its chief exponent, St. Gregory Palamas, had been an Athenite monk. In the years that followed, Athenite monasteries were victims of frequent incursions and were frequently plundered. Furthermore, the taxation imposed on them held them in a stranglehold. As a result, many monasteries were temporarily or definitively abandoned. A great part of their relics was nevertheless preserved through the eagerness and the inventiveness of the monks. These dire conditions led many monasteries to opt for the idiorhythmic way of life and a large number of monks to opt for monastic life in hermitages. At the same time, a number of skittis were reorganized or founded anew, either as groups of retreats and hermitages or as individual building complexes. During these difficult times, the role, the financial contribution and the influence of Balkan countries and Russia was particularly important for monasteries, skitis and hermitages of Mount Athos. It is only natural that this influence is reflected in various buildings dating chiefly from the 19th and early 20th century. Thus, the essentially Byzantine and post-Byzantine architectural heritage of Mount Athos acquires a new component. Mount Athos was liberated from Ottoman rule in 1912 and has since then constituted a self-governed part of the Hellenic state. Today, the Holy Community, which has its headquarters at Kalyes, and the 20 sovereign monasteries, along with their dependencies, follow in the same Athenite tradition of Orthodox monasticism. Collectivite Athenite heritage and centuries-long uninterrupted monastic practice make Mount Athos not simply an institution, but rather a living monument. <laughs>